Slavin makes the point there that it's very early in the season, and it is. However, that's now three wins in their last 17 Premier League matches, going back to last season as well. 74 goals conceded in their last 41 Premier League matches. Those are numbers that are not just this season. This yeah. is a long-term problem. And the frustration, I'll tell you now, from West Ham fans is off the, off the charts. Yeah. I mean, defensively, I think it's been, it's been shocking for a while. Um, they haven't been able to keep people fit. They brought in Fonte, who you thought experience would shore it up a little bit alongside Reid. Hasn't, hasn't been able to get into the team. But I think this window, I thought, looking at him, I thought he'd made some good signings. Joe Hart, top keeper. Mm. Chicharito, goals. Do you know what I mean? And Zabaleta, experience, Zabaleta, the experience, experience. So you thought, added to what they've got already, you thought a decent shape of the team looking, but they started the season, they've not played at home yet, which is a big thing as well. You want to get your home games in and play, play games in. Yeah, we have, to, we have to talk about this, actually, yeah. because we were told this is the deal of the century to, to end up at the Olympic Stadium. But then you have things like a huge athletics event, which means three games in, you've yet to have a home game. That is... That is horrendous for a football club on every level, isn't it? Not to be at home. That's, that's your fortress. That's what happens when you don't own your own stadium, I guess. And obviously, I think as a you start a season, Billich obviously had issues last season. They were under a bit of pressure. Obviously, three away games is a disaster, really, for a manager. And obviously, Rio made a good point. They've had a lot of injuries, West Ham. Too many injuries, I think. Obviously, Andy Carroll not playing. Your best centre forward, never really available. Um, but I agree with Rio. I think they've made some good additions. But maybe it's not the defensive part. You think... Sabaleta, he's got Ogbonna, Reed, mm. he's a terrific defender, Cresswell is brilliant. But maybe they're not getting enough protection from the midfield and higher up the pitch. Maybe they're not working as a unit because goals they concede is far too many. I've watched West Ham's first two games. Obviously, I've not seen today's yeah. defeat at Newcastle. But here against United, they were losing 1-0. Could have equalised just before half-time. Big opportunity. They lost 4-0. They got torn apart in that second mm. half. Against Southampton, they were 2-0 down. One penalty was given away. Anatovic gets sent off. Then they show great character, to be fair, with 10 men, 2-2. And then they concede a penalty in the last minute. Yeah. So that you would say, show great character, but individual errors, stupid mistakes cost them. So, and then today, I've not seen today, but you know, three defeats now. But in last week... You know, to concede again from a penalty is ridiculous decisions from individuals has costed them. OK, um, look, I'll run through some of the comments from, from Hammers fans and at any point you want to just dive in and pick up on a point, feel free. Daniel Hennessy, a defensive coach, a certain ex-Hammer who's sitting with you, ideally, uh, an attacking coach as well, oh, and a new manager. Not asking for a lot, am I? Uh, and Daryl also says, Rio, please get onto your mate, Slav. Come on, sort out our defensive problems. We're unorganised and we're so unfit. Help us. That's Daryl's thoughts. You don't live that far away. What do you think? Would you fancy that? Going and helping out West Ham? You got the time? Yeah, I've got the time. But, um, but Slavin's his own man. and he's, he, Listen, I think Slavin's a good, very good manager. He was mm. great for Croatia. And I think he'll get things right at West Ham. But uh, I think the board, obviously, the deal was done. And he hasn't played at home yet. I think that, that, that bides him enough time. Um, he's going to get it right, I think. But like I said before, I think they made good signings, and if he can get that team playing together, get the. He's get, not get though, Rio. He's back. had so much time, and he it's needs not injuries to come back as well. They've had a lot of injuries. Everyone has injuries, well. though. Andy injuries Carroll, is part and parcel of football, isn't Andy it? Andy Carroll is an integral part of this team. You see, when he gets back fit, he can score goals. Mikel Antonio's massive to decide. Big goals last Five season. Five wins from their last 24 Jake, Premier League games. West Ham fans they're, 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 they're on poor. social media. Slav and Village and all those stats are, are horrific as well. But uh, I think if they have their best team out, fit and healthy, they're nowhere near relegation. I'll tell you what, you might have to make an emotional decision as well. Because I watched West Ham here, and Mark Noble, who has been a magnificent servant to West Ham and has been a fantastic Premier League player, for me, when I watched him, captain, the lead of the side, he just didn't seem to be able to get about the mm. pie. Listen, I think he is a, he's been a brilliant player, Mark Noble, but, you know, can, can he continue to play that many games in the Premier League for West Ham? Ian says, either the team are not responding to Slavin's training methods or Slavin isn't working on West Ham's weaknesses. You've all played for numerous football clubs. When you see the amount of ill-discipline that's going on there and we've spoken about the red cards... What do you think is happening behind the scenes? Well, I, I went in and I was fortunate enough to train with them last season a couple of times. I went in for a couple of days just to get fit for a, for a charity game. And the, the guys, there's a good spirit there. Um, they seem to like Slavon. The training ground seemed a happy place to be. But what happens when you lose games, you get, you get little pockets in the, in the squad that maybe start moaning who aren't playing. And it's whether the management can actually keep that, un, that, that, that underneath... The, uh, yeah. and coming out and, and affecting the team spirit. And, I, and 
time will tell. And I think what happens, you've got to keep that lid on that and you've got to keep that in the training ground and you've got to get things right in the training ground for it to then come out in, on the pitch on a Saturday. But this is against Newcastle, who had not scored a Premier League goal till today, didn't have a Premier League point until today and they've beaten West Ham by three goals to another. And I, I don't want any manager sacked, but if I'm a football fan watching my team who went to the Olympic Stadium to move to the next level and start attacking the Europa League and playing in Europe... I don't want to see my team being after beaten 3-0 by yeah. a promoter. So after, after three games, you'll be questioning your manager. I would if we had three wins in the last 17, four wins in the last 24, 74 goals. You'll be one of those fans now sitting in your seat at, at Norwich saying, I would, man, he's got to go. Yeah, I would. After see, I'm, three games? See, I'm not saying that ridiculous. as a Norwich fan. So you're you're Norwich fans. Do you, you want your new manager to be given no. the sack then? No, no because my new manager has been there for five games. He's been there since the summer. Slaven Bilic has been at West Ham for more than two yeah, seasons. So how much has Slaven spent in this window? £40 million on right, four so players. After three games, after spending £40 million, you're going to sack him. I'm You've got to give him time. If After spending that money, investing that money in this new squad to go and prove that his new signings are worth it. Jake, Jake, the pieces of the puzzles are there for West Ham. No question. If they have their best team fit and healthy, they'll, they'll be, you know, they'll be... The table. Tenth, yeah, they'll be 10th or 12th. But obviously, the interest that they have, Antonio's out, Andy mm. Carroll's out, uh, Cresswell missed significant time last season. They obviously have had issues in goal. There's a lot, the balance of the side is wrong. Yeah, under, under Sam Allardyce who I thought done a great job for West Ham, how many points did they get in the three seasons? Something like 47, 40, 46. 46, yeah. Under Slaven Bilic, was it 60? First season, 67 points. Finished. 67 points? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now they move stadium. Yeah. yeah. And finished 11th last season. And, yeah, 11th last 11th season. 11th is as good as it gets for West Ham, really. What, yeah, what do West Ham fans expect? Well, what clearly, expect? judging by the social media yeah, but comments, Jake, they three games more. in, the boys Stay, are right. I'll tell you what, time. for West Ham United, I know they've got a new stadium, staying in the Premier League is, is yeah. good. Mm -hmm. OK, well, uh, we'll finish with Kartik saying the fine job Bilic did in his first season is quickly fading into the rearview mirror. It's been difficult, to say the least. And Ian Lewis, at a certain point, you have to step back, admit the problem is preparedness. I can't defend Bilic any longer. This is shocking.